So, uh, speak, you know, I want to think, talk about now about what's in uh, Sam Harris's heart when he justifies torture. Uh, for us, uh, do we have that clip? The, the way my argument about torture is mischaracterized is my argument is not about the, the ethical wisdom of torture. It's a comparison between torture and collateral damage. And if you could e ever think of a circumstance where torture prevents collateral damage, then all of it, so we're all open to torture. You have to, you ha I mean, we're all open to collateral damage because you have to, to be to wage any kind of war, right? Collateral damage just comes with war. But collateral damage is so much worse than most people realize or want to think about. And if you think of a situation in which torture would spare you collateral damage, well, then all of a sudden torture is on the table as something that ethically, and, and so this, is, this you, Sam, might, you might think these, the, I mean, maybe we're out of time, but, but, but my conversation about torture is not just, let's just start torturing people because it works and we should do it and, and who cares about uh, its effects. It's collateral damage is so horrible and however you align it with torture, it's worse. I, I think torture should be illegal across the board, but, and, but illegal is not the same thing as always unethical. Again, my argument about torture has several strands to it, but the, the, the core fact is that if you can't imagine a situation in which you would make someone uncomfortable so as to try to get information that you knew they had. There are situations where you know someone has information, right? Now, not every situation is like that, but you have to grant that there are situations where you know you're talking to the guilty guy, right? He might even claim to be the guilty guy. He claims he's got the information. Mm -hmm. He claims he's got a bomb that's gonna go off, right? There are situations like this, and there, sometimes there are small situations that have nothing to do with the war on terror or, or I mean, they're just you know, crime situations where someone has got somebody locked in a box somewhere, right? And he's not talking, right? If you can't imagine a situation where you would beat someone up so as to get them to talk, you're not thinking hard enough about the kind of evil people confront in this world. But it is another politically correct myth that torture never works and that people can just make stuff up out of whole cloth that then leads you on a wild goose chase to harm other people. There are certainly circumstances where that can happen. But you just have to imagine how these real world circumstances come about. You capture someone, uh, someone in Al Qaeda along with his laptop, you know, his hard drive. You have all, you know, 10 years worth of emails, right? So you, you, you have a lot of information about, and people, uh, these people who are interrogating them, you can't just, you can't just make stuff up, right? There's, there's a ton of information here. And again, I am not saying, I'm not sanguine about the torture uh, being a benign thing that we should do cavalierly. I'm not, I, I think it should be illegal. I think if somebody does it in a circumstance that, it, that isn't in absolute extremity of uh, where, where, any, where any decent person would be tempted to use force in this circumstance, um, then these people should be prosecuted and, get, and go to jail for, for decades, right? But there, Sam, but there are circumstances where you would have to be a monster not to lay hands on the bad guy. I should say that my position on torture is exactly the position on torture that you find in the, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, right? And, and one, one thing that's happening to me now in conversations like this and in, you know, on many topics is that much of, much of my discussions have not to do with policy, but are, have been an effort to get at ethical bedrock. I mean, I write and think as a philosopher. Mm -hmm. And in, in, a, in, in the context of having a philosophical discussion about ethics and right and wrong, you can say many things that seem crazy outside of a, right. a philosophy seminar, but in a philosophy seminar are totally legitimate. So in a philosophy seminar, you could say, you know, why can't we eat babies? What's wrong with eating babies? If we've right. got extra babies around that nobody wants, why can't we eat them, right? That is a completely insane thing to say in the world, mm -hmm. s mm -hmm. seemingly. That's the kind of thing that if quoted out of context, you know, if, if Glenn Greenwald decides to tweet, you know, Sam Harris can't, can't figure out why we can't eat babies, right? It makes me look like an asshole. But the reality is, is that if you're talking about, if you're trying to get to the bedrock, about the, 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 the ethics of, of, of good and evil and the use of force, if you're trying to just, then, then starting the conversation with why can't we eat babies? You know, why, why, give me an ethical argument about why this is really, really wrong, why our intuitions of its wrongness is, 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 can be conserved, that is a totally legitimate thing to do. And there's not a philosopher on earth who would think you were a weirdo for having that conversation. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> did you guys eat babies? Did you talk about eating babies in philosophy class? I just want to ask you guys, are philosophers? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we. I mean, you have to demonstrate your examples. So yeah, we always uh, bring a baby in <laughs> early in the yeah. ethics class. How do you do it when you're teaching online? Um, you have to do it on Zoom. You know, it's, it doesn't have the same effect. It's not as visceral as it is in person. So, yeah, you can't smell it. You can't, can't. <laughs> but <laughs> it's still fairly effective, though. Yeah. I like that Harris just said that his position on torture is the position on torture taken by the Stanford. Well, I mean, that's not a thing you can say. The Stanford of Encyclopedia <laughs> Philosophy does not take positions. Position, it might, no, it, it, I just it describes it some positions. Open like, a tab, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, look at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy entry on torture. Just uh -huh. scroll down to the bottom. <laughs> it says, in conclusion, torture is not that bad. <laughs> Okay, I, I missed the conclusion. Yeah, no, I mean certainly. I mean, he, you can find philosophers talking about the possibility there might be one-off emergency situations where it could hypothetically justify, and that's okay. And some maybe talking philosophy. When we're when you're talking public policy, it's really disingenuous to be like, well, we we should consider torture. But I'm only talking in this really abstract uh, philosophical yeah, hypothetical sense. Like it's again this kind of deafness to yeah. To, Lack of awareness about context or nuance. Right? Yeah. He, he's he's not having a philosophical conversation. No. He's talking about our arguments for torture in the context yeah. of a time in America yeah. when we are torturing people. Yeah. And we're not just torturing people because, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Um, you know we've got the we've got their laptop and we're trying to yeah. get to their emails. We're torturing them as as is just an inevitable consequence about having torture as a policy goal. Yeah, yeah. we were torturing as a policy, as a matter of routine, in, in these very much not these really idealized taking time bond scenarios, like we were just doing it routinely to lots of people. And yeah. And so he's pretending, he's like, yeah, torture. So he's, 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 you know, he's a bait and switch. He, He's, he wants to justify the thing we're actually doing. And then when he's pressed, he's like, no, I'm just talking this abstract sense that you'll find on the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. But that's that's not what he's doing. And surely you, no, could, just, you could make that argument. For, you could make any kind of absurd argument. Like, for example, yeah. well, could, w w should we kill all white people if killing all white people in the world would end racial conflict? Or should we kill all... <laughs> You know, should we kill all the people in China, or should we, uh, if if we engaged in mass rape, but by doing that we would save a million people's lives? You know, you can make any kind of utterly ridiculous comparison yeah. between some like if we did this a horrific thing, but the utilitarian outcome would, was a good one. Should yeah. we? Do it? it seems like such a like I mean, it seems like such a stupid argument. Yeah. You could replace torture with any kind of... Yeah, that's right. if, yeah. there was, if there was a rash of people being murdered by being pushed in front of trolleys, I would just stop teaching that part of my, my class. I yeah. just would erase the trolley case yeah. from my lesson plans. It would be a loss, but... Given the context... <laughs> yeah. well, and, and again, it's... it's not according to Nathan Robinson, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, um... You know, I, I did. Um, I said what I have to say about that in the um, uh, in the Jack the piece I did about Judith Jarvis Thompson. So see that. But uh, in uh, in any case, uh, I think uh, it, it's just clearly not the case that he is. Um, uh, that uh, that he's just sort of raising a hypothetical, just sort of playing with this stereo for for its own sake right he said like he literally has the piece force just showed us that says in defense of torture right if somebody if somebody said i mean first of all um i've i've taught and taken a lot of philosophy classes in my life i've actually never heard it maybe an example maybe i'm just weird that way but um but whatever how I are you I, running your ethics classes with <laughs> i could I could imagine somebody using that as an extreme example of something or other, you know, some hypothetical about eating babies. But 
Uh, if somebody ran an article that they called, right, they put on their website and they called it in defense of eating babies, yeah. uh, I would think that was pretty bad. I would they support eating babies and, and I, I, would, I would have a problem with it uh, as as such. Um, and, and it's like saying uh, because he is doing this very characteristic uh, Sam Harris thing where he is really fuzzy and really equivocal and switches back and forth between talking about practical public policy and oh, I'm just considering some hypotheticals. Um, you know, he helps himself to all of these things. Like, well, you're sure that the person did it. Right? It's like, well, yeah. how, how, how does that work? Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like how, how is it that you achieve this, this certainty? Because in, um, like, Obviously, the ticking time bomb, you know, hypothetical is is you know is a very unrealistic hypothetical. Uh, it's you know, you're not find cases that are exactly uh, like that. Uh, but if you have like in real life, right, people who uh, you know there are tons of cases of people who the government was totally sure was a terrorist, uh, you know, who then were later let you know decreed to not be a terrorist. So Bush administration at the time who was writing this stuff told us that the people in Guantanamo Bay were the worst of the worst uh, and and later quietly admitted that the vast majority, you know, they didn't have any real evidence of them uh, them doing anything. Uh, yeah. And and in like sort of Western style legal systems, uh, you know, not just, but I mean, certainly those, uh, the, the method for deciding with that somebody is guilty of a crime is that you have a trial where you know, somebody tries to prove it and they're represented by somebody who tries to, to refute the allegations and, you know, and, and, and then you, and then you have a, you know, judge or jury, you know, decide uh, who's, uh, who's right after this like long review of all the evidence. Uh, so if you're, if you're saying, oh, we're talking about people we're sure are guilty. Well, is this happening after all that? Right. Cause Certainly people are cleared even after being convicted at trials, new evidence comes up or whatever. But I think the minimum threshold would be that, you know, there was a trial where you were found guilty. But of course that takes a long time. I mean, by the time somebody has been successfully tried, any, any ticking time bombs they knew about went off years ago. So, I mean, you are clearly going to be, if you're torturing people, uh, you're clearly going to be in a situation where you are torturing innocent people. Like, you know, you, you know, you should just own that, especially because as a actual philosopher who's written about this, Daniel Lubin, uh, in his article, uh, was it liberalism torture and, you know, the, uh, and terrorism torture, the ticket time, um, I think that's the name of the essay, uh, points out, you know, a lot of times these ticking time bomb thought experiments play on the impression that you're making a purely utilitarian calculation, like Jane was talking about, that you say, okay, here's the bad consequence, you know, that somebody underwent a bunch of pain, but here's a good consequence uh, that uh, that you've, you've you know saved all these lives. The good consequence outweighs the bad consequence, so you do it. But of course, the ticking time bomb scenario is not actually appealing to a purely utilitarian intuition. There is also this very definite. Uh, deontological intuition that it's appealing to that it's part of why it's okay is that the person you're torturing uh, is a morally wicked person. They're a terrorist, you know, they, they have a coming or at least they, they can't right, complain too much, you know, because, because they're such a terrible person. And Lubin has a nice way of extending the thought experiment to bring this out, which I saw somebody, Oliver mentioned in the chat, which is okay. <laughs> If you're if you really were making a purely utilitarian calculation, let's do you the stupid unrealistic ticking time bomb scenario, and but now let's say that this particular terrorist is so hardened, you know, he's he's so uh, he's, he's he's trained for this, maybe you know, like like he's he's had his confederates, you know, waterboard him or whatever, you know, to like build up a resistance to it that you don't that you're that you don't think that he's going to crack under torture. But you think maybe if you bring the six-year-old daughter in and torture her in front of him, then maybe he'll crack and you can find the ticking time bomb. Now do you still do it? And if you say no, then clearly what's driving you is not this simple utilitarian calculation. Isn't that yeah, like if your Harris, Harris could just tell you all you need to do is study some, uh, some neuroscience 
and you'll come to the <laughs> correct conclusion that you do need to torture that six-year-old girl. Or just meditate on it, and then the self-evident <laughs> truth will reveal <laughs> itself. You just <laughs> haven't thought hard enough about these ideas. <laughs> but that, we I'm, all know that you should torture the six-year-old girl. <laughs> just none of us have the bravery to admit it. That's <laughs> uh, 24. That's like, this is like, this is, this is what happens when people were like, I always thought 24 was a bit lame as a TV show, but that's literally the kind of nonsense that happens in that. I'm pretty sure there's an episode of 24 where they, there's like someone with a nuclear bomb and then they have to threaten to kill his children and they stage killing his children to like get him to do it, which like to get him to give up the ghost on thing. So that's like, it's just, it's just like complete fantasy th uh, things to justify mm -hmm. Uh, public policy. And this is Sam Harris, and I hate the term because everybody uses it nowadays, but gaslighting. He is, he is telling us he's having a philosophical abstract com conversation, and as everyone has pointed out, he's doing this within the context where the United States government is justifying torture. Actual and, torture, yep. And you can't, so you can't, we're not talking, the United States is, government is not eating babies, right? <laughs> it is torturing people. So if he gave his eating babies art, uh, argument in defense of eating babies, people would have been like, this is a weird article, right? But there didn't have been that result. But he's deliberately being provocative mm -hmm. and um, by by saying, oh, in defense of torture. It's not, let's have a thought of it, Aaron, about torture. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to defend something. Why do you need to defend torture? Because it is a current policy being engaged in by the United States government, and it's something that uh, many people, not just leftists, but many liberals at the time, were deeply uncomfortable about. And Sam Harris can whine and whine about, and this is what he always does, that he's being misquoted or taken out of context. But, you know, when you put your hand in the fire uh, and you yelp, it's your own fault, right? And it's his own fault. He wants the attention, right? Uh, and he got the attention. He just didn't like the fact that people, uh, because, you know, it challenges this kind of self-image is this, like, arbiter of rationality uh like the the thinking man's bill ma i'm gonna come back to it he's just freaking bill yeah. ma but not as funny At least yeah. <laughs> the 24 the 24 example is perfect too because he seems to think that you're way more likely to encounter some guy that's like like in like getting interrogated in the middle of it and is like yeah i did it but you're not gonna know where it like like where the the ticking time bomb is or you're not gonna know you know like this guy is getting torched like but it never crossed his mind that like someone's tortured, you know, so much that they're like lying about it just to get the torture to stop. Like that's never something that crosses well, his well, mind. Which is, which is generally speaking how that actually works. Like, yeah, uh, there, you know, there are, you know, I mean, it's very difficult to find, um, you know, real life examples, uh, you know, like, like there are a few, right. You know, but, but, but there are relatively sparse, you know, real life examples, of people giving up real information that was still operationally relevant, which again is like, it's very unlikely to be by the time this happens, mm -hmm. uh, even if you're not trying people, even if you're just, you know, indefinitely detaining them, you know, by the time you get to that point, probably what they know is out of date. Uh, but uh, that's very hard to find, but what's very easy to find are people, uh, you know, just spouting nonsense that the torturers want to hear under torture. Like that happens all the time. I mean, that was, you know, yeah. from, like the Spanish Inquisition to the Moscow show trials to the invasion of Iraq, uh, mm -hmm. which was justified to a great extent uh, by bullshit about WMDs that people said under torture that, you know, yeah. like, which, which, which is just factually nonsensical, but, you know, people, you know, but they, you know, if you're being tortured, you are most likely going to eventually start saying whatever you guess that your torturer wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Also, his public policy prescription is weird for it because in his public policy description in that, he's saying that he thinks that torture should be illegal, but maybe ethically speaking, somebody is like, someone is so sure that their information is right that they torture anyway, and then they're going to go, you know, stand trial themselves to prove that information, which makes no sense from a public policy point of view. Well, but, makes then, no but, then, sense. well but then he also said, like, he, he did, because he was talking to Jenk and he was like... Um, and he's in his defense of Crouch, right? He's 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 in the uh, he's in the mot, right? Like that's the uh, um, you know you you've got um, the uh, always worried I'm getting this mixed up, but you know the uh, yeah the mot is like the castle, the Bailey's the courtyard outside the castle. So you know mot and Bailey 
uh, you know, strategy for for arguing. It's a form of the fallacy of equivocation where you say you you spend most of your time out in the Bailey, you know, excited defending like the really exciting provocative claims. Then when somebody attacks you on and you don't have a good response, you retreat into the mot where you defend some very narrow defensible version of your claim. Like, oh, all I was saying was. And then you come up with something that's so narrow that it's not even that controversial. So, uh, you know, like, it's like when, um, you know, when uh, when Jordan Peterson says we should have enforced monogamy and then be like, well, wait, 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 what? Enforced monogamy? And he says, no, all I'm saying is that we should, like, culturally discourage adultery, you know, the way we already do. Uh, and, uh, and then, so Harris is very much in his mot here. Uh, but uh, so he... Which means that he really skips over that, but even in the mop version, uh, he does suggest that under uh, that under some circumstances you should let the person off at trial, right? So it's like it's yeah, he doesn't want to outright legalize it, but yeah, not always prosecute it, you know. Which again, given that this is a time when he's writing this, when U.S. government policy was to engage in so-called deta- advanced interrogation. And then later on, you know, the Obama administration decided not to prosecute anybody for it. You know, the suggestion that this is all totally detached from anything that happens in the real world, that he's, he's just doing a philosophy seminar, uh, is, is really, like, weird and insulting and also just bizarre because uh, if you're going to do a philosophy seminar, then you should read some philosophy. And that's something that Harris is famously, like, extremely resistant to doing. Yeah, and you could justify anything this way. I mean, when you were talking about, I was thinking about, you know, uh, I read Mont Emoa's book, How to Hide an Empire, and there's a chapter in there about the guy who did uh, all these like illegal experiments for cancer treatment on people in Puerto Rico, like implanting cancer into them, you know, like doing all these like st- uh, illegal experiments on humans, but the outcome was cancer treatment, right? So, you know, do we say like, oh, it's okay, you know, if you're going to save people's lives, can we do human experiments? You know, if the, the cost is, it's, it just seems like this kind of argument is any, any nasty thing that you could tangentially have a good, a good outcome from, like, you know, experimenting on prisoners for the good of the, the whole, you could, you could make that argument for anything. It, 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 I mean, I don't know what you philosophy guys say about it, but is that, it, is that like, is that something that, you know, like philosophy guys talk about a lot about like doing horrible things to, to that have good ends? Um, I mean, we, we like to use horrible examples, but I mean, it, 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 that's usually in the context of like talking about a moral theory. And it's like, okay, let's press the, you know, let's draw out the consequences of the theory and let's drop the most absurd consequences of the theory. And yeah, and the, then, the, the, know, point, the point, like, like if you were to use a baby eating example, yeah. The, it would be most likely a reductio of some theory to say like exactly oh it wouldn't be to justify eating babies it would be to say okay your theory leads to eating babies we've got to revise your theory a little bit um yeah yeah but, but if, yeah if it, would never, it would never it would never be you'd never get a, yeah you would never get the philosopher writing the in, in defense of baby torture paper <laughs> yeah no exactly. or eating babies or whatever 